The last additive synthesizer we're going to look at is Razor, but Razor is what I would really define as a hybrid synthesizer, meaning that you can forego any of the unique features of additive on this if you want. For example, we could load up a couple of sawtooth waves here. We could detune them down with the ratio. We could use a filter. We could completely skip over these dissonance effects, which these are really for the most part where you're getting the um, unique additive quality of this instrument and just use things like these specialty stereo effects. There's a limiter on the end. We have all of our basic envelopes down here. And this doesn't have to be an additive synthesizer if you don't want it to be. And many of the patches on here don't really utilize the um, additive qualities of this instrument. So this video is not an introduction to Razer. It's an introduction to Razer as additive synthesizer. So I'll be skipping over the features that actually make this instrument really unique and really usable to instead focus on like what makes this additive and, and what makes it special as an additive synthesizer, I guess, is um, the main part I want to show you. So I'm going to turn off the filter. I'm going to turn off this second oscillator. And what we have to start is just a saw wave. And we can load up our uh, spectrum analyzer as a reference if we need it. Uh, I have a ratio control. This ratio is just going to be going up the harmonic series for us. So if I start at 1, we're down here at a C2. If I bring it up to 2, I should expect this to go to C3. And then if I go up to 3, I should expect this to go to the following G. So we're going up that harmonic series. And we can see that like so, but I'm just going to keep it on one. And the first thing that makes this additive and kind of uniquely additive is this color knob. This color knob is setting the balance of our partials. Do we want to focus on the lower partials? Do we want to focus on the higher partials in the sound? Right? So this is not just a tilt filter. This is actually controlling the balance of the various partials in the sound. Okay. And we also then have the ability to go from pulse to saw. Um, we have a lot of different oscillator options, which we'll look at in a second. But again, this isn't two samples. This is a formula. And we can then switch between the two of them. And we can see how that balance is obviously changing. Uh, this is one of the uh, less interesting of the oscillator choices. As you can see, I can go in and pick a wide variety of things. And one of the ones that I really like to use is like the primes. Okay, so this is totally an additive type idea of what harmonics do I want to bring up? What do I want to preface in this signal? And we can watch it actually just on this display for now. That's fine. And we can get a wide range here. Try out some different things starting with one. You can see how it's changing and all the way up then to eight. So let's pick something like two. Eh, let's do something more. Let's go like 2.15. And we could again adjust the color on this a little bit. And then choose the balance that we want. And this is probably what makes this more additive than anything else is depending on what oscillators you choose and what additional controls and parameters they give you. All right, we're going to skip over the filter section here and instead jump into this dissonance effects section. And this is where you get the specialty. This is the special sauce, at least in my opinion, with this instrument as it relates to additive. Because what you're going to see is that when I adjust something like a mount, Look at what we're doing to this waveform. Totally an additive type thing. And then we could go in here and we could put something like um, an LFO onto this. Let's use LFO number one. So something like that is definitely really cool if we wanted to uh, 
<laughs> just start messing around. And that to me is what kind of makes this additive. It would be messing with a lot of these controls that are changing these balances in kind of real time. That would make the instrument very interesting. So we could go and we could put like an envelope onto this amount. Let's go with envelope two. And then let's go through some of these shapes here and see if there's something interesting. There's like a random one here, and I'm going to put that on the amount. And when we get this then wacky balance uh, inside the spectrum analyzer, that's really kind of the additive quality to this. And we can obviously come in and see all the stuff that's going on with our partials. They're really freaking out. And now one of the other things that additive affords you the luxury of is doing things like keeping your fundamentals safe no matter what. And that's what the safe base is all about. We can bring on the safe base and then we'll be able to see how this fundamental gets hyped up. And we're not creating the most usable of sounds right now. I just want to show you some of these other effects that are on here. And let's just go back in and turn these modulators off for now. And so we can just see what's happening to our partials and our overtones. A lot of control. Uh, but also just a lot of experimentation. We have the uh, stiff string. So this is a little bit more like a physical modeling type deal. And we can see now how drastically we've changed this sound. And I look to these and I consider all of these like additive formulas because all it's doing is messing with our balance of the various sine waves and the sine banks that we have. So. And obviously, if we go in and do turn things on like the reverb. Right, these are the sort of sounds that we're familiar with um, with Razor, but it's all about some of these additive components first. All right, so I'll leave it up to you to explore and experiment with the instrument. I uh, just thought I would share this one with you because it is probably an instrument that everyone refers to as being additive, but you got to make sure that you're using those additive components and then throwing on some of the various modulators if you really want to get um, some funky movement going on with your overtones, with your partials, with your harmonics.